Hey, y'all. I'm Bud Elliott, and this is my College Football Summer School Series on Cover 3. I bring on the team experts from the 24-7 sports staff and ask them the questions I care about. No fluff. Which players will be toughest to replace? What position groups are sneakily better or worse than I realize? We get you the scoop on each team in 20 minutes or less. Let's go. You guys, Bud Elliott here. Welcome back into the Cover 3 College Football Podcast. This is my summer school series. I'm bringing on Evan Flood. Evan, let's talk a little Wisconsin Day, man. Sounds good. Exciting new era here in Madison. Absolutely. So uh, last year, you know, seven and six, they they decided to make the change, which I think surprised some people that they you know would would, would go ahead and do that. But obviously, they, they have high expectations there in Madison, and things uh, had started to stagnate a little bit. What what are some of the biggest changes you've seen so far under Lou Fickle? I mean, well, what hasn't changed? I know you know he he was big on trying to keep the Wisconsin culture around, trying to keep the brand going even though there were going to be overwhelming changes you know specifically with the roster and, and the systems uh, on both sides of the ball but but the biggest change has to be the offense i mean the, the offense that uh, wisconsin fans grew up with that, that everybody thinks uh you know when you think wisconsin is ground and pound methodical that's all out the window i mean i, I was watching spring practice and you know I'd, I'd take a note after a play you know if, if i had my head down in that notebook too long i was missing the next snap i mean now my, my palate's probably different than than yours and, and most that, that are accustomed to seeing you know sort of uh you know up tempo pro uh up tempo spread offenses so um you know it took a while for me to adjust but i think wisconsin fans you know who haven't seen this product on the field offensively are going to be shocked by just how fast they move how many plays, uh, you know, they're going to get in in a short amount of time. I mean, again, you think Wisconsin, they're, they're used to use every one of those 40 seconds <laughs> in the play clock. Now, you know, it's 10, 15 seconds, boom, boom, boom. Um, they're running out of the shotgun. Almost everything's out of the shotgun these days. Uh, you're going to see a, a different type of, um, you know, run style than, than you're accustomed to trying to get guys like like Braylon Allen in, in, in space, which is going to be unique this fall to see a guy who's built like that try and, and play in a, a spread offense. You know, you've all of a sudden got three, four-star quarterbacks on the roster. You know, it used to be if you had one, you were feeling pretty good about where Wisconsin was at. Now you see this influx of receivers as well. Bryson Green comes in from Oklahoma State, had a prolific year. C.J. Williams, a former five-star out of USC, uh, it, it's just, I hear these things come out of my mouth and, and I almost don't believe it, you know, after all the stuff you know, I've witnessed offensively for Wisconsin. So, you know, that, that's going to be the biggest adjustment, I, I think, for people when, when they watch this product, which, you know, I'm sure it's exciting to a lot of people just see Wisconsin sort of catch up now to, to you know, kind of what's typical in, in college football. No doubt about it. I mean, Wisconsin very well might be favored in, what, all but one game, potentially the the, 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 the game – against the Buckeyes, and even even that won't be a walkover, certainly, uh, for Ohio State since they have to come to Madison. Uh, you, you mentioned the quarterback, Tanner Mordecai from SMU, had a really strong year last year. How has he looked in Phil Longo's dairy raid? Yeah, you know, it, it, it's been up and down. I, I would say he started hot early. Now, how much of it is just Wisconsin's defense, which is pretty good uh, to begin with, starting to adjust to, to what they're seeing? Obviously, they've practiced against a completely different system uh, for, for years in, in – seem to get stronger as spring wore on and you know, Mordecai kind of struggled to take care of the football. Uh, I would say, you know, based on first impressions and you know, also have to take into consideration, he's playing with a brand new group of people, um, players and coaches. Um, you can probably be a, a step above, you know, what Wisconsin had in, in, in Graham Mertz. Uh, I think the biggest thing they need from him is just ball security, managing the game, getting the ball out quickly. They didn't put a whole lot on, on his plate. It was a lot of quick strike throws, um, not necessarily leaving him in the, in the pocket too long. So I, I think he's still getting a feel for things. But, but you know, it was relatively inconsistent for him. Had his days um, that he looked really good. Had, had days, you know, he, he'd love to have back. Uh, so I'm still kind of on the fence about, you know, where he is, you know, in terms of is he going to be the guy that, takes the shackles off this Wisconsin offense and gets them over the hump. Obviously we'll know a lot more this fall once he gets accustomed to the playbook, um, gets better chemistry with, with the teammates and, and, and all that. But um, it, it was a good, but, but not a great spring for him. I obviously like, like the, the question there is not if he's the guy, it's really like, is he the guy that's going to make this thing go to another level? I assume. Yeah, I, I actually think I like what Wisconsin has in, in Braden Locke. I think, you know, the Mississippi state transfer, uh, he did not look like a guy who's never played a snap of college football yet. You know, I, I think if 
a scenario were to arise where he were to get in there, I think Wisconsin fans should feel pretty good uh, about him. But, you know, Tanner Mordecai took every single first team snap. Locke didn't get one. I think the writing's on the wall there. They're, they're going to go until, you know, something unforeseeable happens. For sure. Uh, now, on the offensive line, they return everybody but one. But the one was a you know, pretty good player there in Joe Tipman. What, what's their plan to replace him? And, and do you think this offensive line could be better than last year's? Uh, it, it remains to be seen. I think the center position is a, a huge question mark for, for Wisconsin. And you know, we talked about the changes in the offense. The, the biggest adjustment right now is the snapping. Wisconsin did almost everything under center. Now these guys are going shotgun and, and a lot of snaps, uh, you know, missed their mark there, there in spring. It, it was a shocking number of, of botched snaps. Now the Cincinnati transfer, Jake Renfro was out all spring. He may end up alleviating all of those concerns uh, we'll, we'll see, but, but he was a guy that didn't play in 2022 either. Um, and he's missed a, a ton of football over the last two years now. So he's going to be playing catch up uh, in, in the fall here, uh, trying to get, you know, with, with this new offense as well. Uh, they have Tanner Bordellini, who's got a lot of experience at, at that center position, but, but that's not really his strongest spot. He wants to be at one of the guards. Um, on the other hand, you know, where, where do you move him? Because you, you've got Joe Huber, the Cincinnati transfer, came in and looked really good. I think he's, he, if Wisconsin's offensive line is better than it was a year ago, he's going to be a big reason why. I think he's solidified uh, that, that left guard spot there. And then the other guard spots, you know, you, you got um, uh, Joe Brunner, a really promising uh, young, young player that, that's pushing for time. Um, blanking on the name here, but, but they've got, a, <laughs> they, they've got a, um, a lot of bodies at, at the guard position. I'm sorry, Michael Fertney, a senior, um, came back for a six years. The guy I'm, I'm thinking of that, that can play that spot as well. Uh, so they got depth. Uh, they, they've got, um, you know, some young players pushing for time as well. Uh, I think the two tackle spots are pretty, pretty solidified with Jack Nelson, who could end up being a guy that goes pro after this year. Riley Malman, a, a really high upside right tackle that, that's going in his sophomore year. So, it's got a chance to be better, but but Jake Renfro really needs to to uh, get into that center spot and, and and kind of alleviate a lot of those issues Wisconsin's having in, in their new pro stat or new spread offense. Absolutely, on, on the defensive side of the ball, this is Luke Fickle, basically his signature. Defensive line wise, they do lose Keanu Benton, who was a, a really good college football player. Now will be a a, a pro. Uh, they take you know Darian Barner uh, from Temple. Uh, what what's the transition been there like? Is Varner expected to start? What 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 are you seeing there from that interior defensive line? Yeah, that's, that's going to be the biggest question mark on, on defense. Um, aside from maybe how they replace Nick Herbig, they, they just don't have that that typical front seven. I, I think that they've got guys who have played a lot of football, but but they don't necessarily have you know that that dude that's going to impact things behind the line of scrimmage con consistently and, and make those plays like like Benton did and even if you know Benton wasn't making the play he, he was a reason why other people were just his ability to take on multiple blockers you know sometimes get the quarterback happy feet get him moving outside the pocket getting getting rid of that ball quickly uh they've got uh, some problems i think in, in that front group specifically with the line now Barner was out all spring so we don't know necessarily what they have there I think ideally Wisconsin would like him to to start he's a guy that I think had four or five sacks uh last season at, at Temple that's you know significantly more than any other player on, on Wisconsin's defensive line you know Rodas Johnson's a guy that that showed flashes through his career but hasn't been consistent you know James Thompson Jr. Uh, played a lot of football last year. He, he's got a lot of measurables you, you can't teach at, at 6'6", 250. Uh, but, you know, he he hasn't necessarily put it all together yet either. So I, I think Barner's got to be the answer there. And, you know, you will see Wisconsin go a lot lighter uh, this year defensively under Mike Tressel than they did uh, under Jim Leonard. Um, you know, Mike Tressel, I, I think, wanted to incorporate some of the 3-4 that, that Jim Leonard was doing. And I still think he will. But, uh, they're they're going to play to their strengths, and right now their strengths are, are more at middle linebacker, uh, corner, and, and, and safety, and, and getting those guys on the field, trying to be lighter, more athletic. Makes sense to me. Obviously, you, you got to play to your personnel. What what's the pass rush plan for this team? I, I I assume a lot of it will have to come from those outside linebackers. 
Yeah, you, you think so, but you know, this position hasn't really come along the, the way it has, um, you know, in the past. I, I think Nick Herbig's going to be extremely difficult, if not impossible, for, for Wisconsin to replace. Uh, they, they got a guy that the previous staff was very high on, and Daryl Peterson played quite a bit as a redshirt freshman, had two sacks in, in reserve last season. You know, like some of those defensive linemen, I, I just don't know if he, he's put it all together yet. And, and um, you're certainly probably not an every down guy uh, for Wisconsin, but but third and long, I, I still think he's somebody that, you know, you let him pin his ears back and, and, and turn it loose. Uh, but but he's somebody I, I think that's maybe one of the most important players uh, on this defense, just in terms of giving them what they're going to lose with, with Herbig, who was a factor on every single snap. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised, though, if Wisconsin turns more to their inside linebackers for pressure. They got two returning starters, Amuma and John Meda and, and Jordan Turner, both of which had breakout seasons last year. Saw him use a lot of three inside linebacker looks in, in, in spring and putting a guy like Jake Cheney, who, who's played a lot of football, um, and kind of having him be a rover, you know, whether it's lining him up on the edge or really three inside linebackers at once or even putting him in pass coverage, just trying to mix and match him and, and get a certain matchup you like and, and let him attack. Uh, so I actually think the inside linebackers are going to be much more of a factor in, in, in the pass rush than uh, the, the outside linebackers, which is, you know, kind of atypical of what we've seen in Wisconsin the past couple of years. But I, I just don't think they have the guys to necessarily impact um, the, the passer on a consistent basis. The, the secondary did lose three of their top four guys, at least by snap count. They take two transfers, or maybe three, depending on, on, on how, you, how you read uh, the depth chart there. What, what's your assessment of the secondary? Are, are they a step down from where they were last year? I think it might be a step up. I know, you know, a lot of people will look at the loss of John Torchio, five interceptions, but, you know, but he was a guy that, that really struggled to tackle. I think, you know, he had, I think Pro Football Focus had him with, with 12 or and actually I think it was closer to 17, which was far missed tackles, which is far more than anybody on, on Wisconsin's roster uh, that they got a guy in Hunter Wohler who's kind of been waiting in the wings, a former four star prospect that opted to stay home you know, over Ohio State, Notre Dame and, and others. He was injured last year, uh, came back midway through the season and, and showed a lot of good stuff. You know, he's ready. Uh, to, to kind of be a, a leader for this defense and, and maybe, you know, one, one of their better players. You know, Kamoi Latu at, at safety uh, was one of the more underrated transfer pickups in the portal last year. I uh, came over from Utah, and when Wohler went down, stepped in really nicely. Uh, just one of the most violent players, you know, I've ever seen come through this program as a hitter. Uh, and they got depth at, at safety. Uh, you know, I like a lot of these young guys I think are going to, steal some snaps specifically Austin Brown you know was a former four star played in nine games as a true freshman you know he, he was not only Jim Leonard's guy but but he was Luke Fickle's guy Luke Fickle wanted him really badly when he was at Cincinnati and they pushed hard for him uh, as well so I think they're going to try and get him on the field corner they got Alexander Smith back uh, for a six year which was big uh, he, he was hampered by a hamstring injury half of last season and never really got to show his best stuff um, and then they picked up um, a couple of a transfer cornerbacks, one of which I, I think is a, a really promising addition in, in Boston College transfer Jason Matry. They're going to line him up in the slot. And he, he's played everywhere uh, over his uh, five five years uh, in, in collegiate football, safety, perimeter corner. But, but Wisconsin kind of wants to use him as a, a bigger physical slot corner who, who can run and, and come up in the box and, and, and tackle. And then, um, you know, they, they did well, I think, in, in Luke Fickle's first recruiting class at a corner. A couple of true freshmen, Jace Arnold and, and um, Jonas DeCluna, uh, both really held down the second team. Uh, they'll, they'll see some snaps uh, here and there. Uh, they looked pretty good in the spring as well. Uh, they also picked up another transfer from Grand Valley State, who was a D2 All-American. So, so they were able to fill out this uh, secondary pretty well, I think, in the offseason, and, and that's good for Wisconsin because that's typically been the, the biggest weakness of this defense. They've been all about the front seven, but, but you know, this season I would, I would say the back end, you know, is probably its strength. It, just from, you know, hearing you chat about this, first of all, this is why I love doing summer school because I, I would have assumed that the, the secondary would, would take a step back, and it sounds like they'll be better. Is this defense roughly the same caliber of last year's, or, or do you think it's materially different? I think it'll be about the same. I just think the strengths will be different. You know, you'll go from a team that wants to pack the box, 
um, a cause havoc up front to, uh, again, like I said about the offense, you know, the defense is changing a little bit as well. You know, they're going to be uh, bigger, faster, more athletic on the back end than I think people are used to. I'm not saying they're you know up there with, with Ohio State or anything about that, but from Wisconsin standards, it's going to be different than what you think. You know, Wisconsin typically – uh, under Jim Leonard, you know, wants to play that game between the tackles. I don't think that's the case this year. I think they like what they have um, in the secondary to be able to put five, six guys on, on the field at the same time, move them around and, and create uh, looks and, and pressures from that way, rather than relying on, on um, the front seven to do the majority of that. You know, we saw in spring, it was a real light box. I mean, the I think, you know, as spring wore on, we saw more two-man fronts than, than anything. So I think you're going to see the secondary kind of take over and, and be the playmakers of this defense. But but in terms of overall, I, I would say it's relatively similar to, to last season's. Uh, not not one of the more dominant ones that you've seen since Wisconsin went to the 3-4 uh, under Dave Aranda, Justin Wilcox, and, and Jim Leonard. But, you know, probably somewhere top 25 nationally. Evan Badger two four seven. Really appreciate the time. I'll get you out of here on this one. Where where's the spot on this ball club that they have to stay healthy because the drop off between the starters and the backups is just that large. I would say defensive line, and I'm not very overly high on that group. But you know, you, you see what they have in the two deep. They don't have a whole lot. And I know Greg Scruggs, the first year defensive line coach, is working and recruiting to revamp that that whole group and and, and kind of change what they have, but. Uh, you know, they, they've got four guys that have played games who, you know, I think are, are going to struggle, especially early in the season. Uh, if, if they were to lose one or two to say injuries, I think it would be a huge problem with what they got be, behind that that group. There, there's just not a lot of guys who have been able to play football in, in this program, um, which, again, goes back to why I think you're seeing a lot of two man fronts, um, A, to protect those guys, B, they just don't have the depth and, and talent uh, specifically at the end position. So. Uh, if they are going to get faster and more athletic as a defense, they need guys like Rodas Johnson, Darian Varner, James Thompson Jr. to to start impacting things on the edge there, and also need to stay healthy because Wisconsin, you know, can't replace those guys either. Evan, really appreciate the time here at summer school. Yeah, thanks for having me.